The second problem in the warm-up for section 2.1 got at the idea of a um, of a spanning tree of a graph. So a subset of a graph or subgraph of a graph, which is spanning, which contains all of the vertices of the original graph, and which is also connected, but it's sort of minimally connected, right? We don't want to use more edges than we need. Um, because in that particular example, we were trying to connect the buildings in the most minimum way possible. And this really gets at the idea of what we call a spanning tree of a graph. So given a graph G, we say that a spanning tree is going to be a spanning subgraph, which also happens to be a tree. Right? So remember, a spanning subgraph means it's going to contain all of the original vertices, or all of the vertices of the original graph, so it's a spanning subgraph, but it's also a tree, which means it has to be connected and it has to contain no cycles. And so as an example, consider this graph here. Um, there's lots of different spanning trees of this particular graph. One of them would be, well, okay, we want to make sure that we have all of the original vertices, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And then we want to choose just some of the edges so that the resulting graph is, in fact, a tree. So it has to be connected and contain no cycles. So you could choose, let's say, AE and EB, or you could choose AE and AB. But you can't choose all three of these because that would form a cycle. So I'm just going to say maybe I'll choose these two, AB and BE. Okay. Uh, now I also need to make sure that this graph is connected, so let's say I'll include FG as well. Maybe I'll also include BF, so I'm starting to connect this up, and BC, and then finally I'll select CD. Alright, so this is an example of a spanning tree, because it's a spanning subgraph, it contains all the original vertices, and it's a tree, it doesn't have any cycles and it's connected. It's not the only spanning spanning tree, you could come up with some other examples, um, but it's worth pointing out that our last theorem, and in fact the last corollary, tells us that every connected graph is going to have at least one spanning tree. In the notes, this is called corollary 2.1.3. Um, so let's try to prove that using the results from the last video. So let's let G be a connected graph. And we're going to assume that T is a connected spanning subgraph of the original graph of minimum size. All right, well, how do we know one of these exists? Certainly a spanning subgraph exists because you could just take all of G itself. That would count as the spanning subgraph because it has all the vertices of the original graph and it's technically a subgraph. Um, but we want it to be minimal size. So what we mean by that is we want to make sure that this is a spanning subgraph that's connected, right? So it has, to, it has to be connected. There has to be a path between every pair of vertices. And we want it to be minimum in the sense that we cannot delete any other, or we cannot delete any other edges without disconnecting the graph. Okay, so how can we assume that such a spanning subgraph exists? It might help to think about it sort of just looking at this picture here. Essentially what we're gonna do is when we're looking for a spanning subgraph, we're just taking away some edges. So this is saying take away edges in any sort of manner that you want, as long as you're keeping the graph connected. And keep doing that until you get to the point where if you delete another edge, it's going to disconnect the graph. Okay, so let's let T be such a, a spanning subgraph. We're going to prove that T is in fact a spanning tree. Now, we already know that it's a spanning subgraph, so to prove that it's a tree, we just need to show that it's connected and has no cycles. Um, okay, well, certainly it's connected because we said T is a connected spanning subgraph. So how do we know that it has no cycles? We must show that T has no cycles. Well, remember what we learned in theorem, what did I name that theorem? 2.1.1. Right, by 2.1.1, we learned that an edge of a graph is a bridge 
if and only if it lies on no cycle of the graph. Okay, well, every single edge in this graph T has the property that if we were to delete that edge, we would disconnect the graph, right? That's what this is saying right here. For every edge in this, in this subgraph T, if you delete it, you disconnect the graph. So since every edge of T is a bridge, we know from theorem 2.1.1 that right, an edge is a bridge if and only if it does not lie on any cycle. That each edge does not lie on any cycle. In other words, this graph T has no cycles. And since we already know that it's connected by our assumption, since T is connected with no cycles, T is a tree. And in particular, because it's a spanning subgraph and a tree, it's a spanning tree. Okay, so this is another nice corollary from that result theorem 2.1.1. Now, we've seen also um, in the notes that some graphs don't have any bridges, right? We've seen some examples of graphs that have no bridges. But we can always disconnect a graph if we delete enough edges. Right? Because if you delete all the edges, it's certainly going to be disconnected. And so um, if a graph doesn't have any bridges, it's still worth trying to come up with some sort of way of saying, well, you, it doesn't have any bridges, but if you delete some small enough number of edges, um, it's possible to disconnect the graph. And so we have the idea of a cut set of a graph. So a cut set of a graph is just a set that's a subset of the edges of the graph. So S is a subset of the edges of G, such that if you were to delete that set of edges, so take the graph and delete that set of edges, it disconnects the graphs. But for every proper subset, T of S, G minus T is connected. In other words, it's a cut set if you can take away those edges and disconnect the graph, but if you only took away some of those edges without taking away all those edges, it's going to leave the graph connected. All right. Um, and so as an example here, let's look at this graph in the corner. Uh, one example of a cut set, I'll call it S1, would be if I deleted this edge and this edge, because if I deleted both of them, I'd end up with two components, the single vertex component A and then the sort of square component down here. But if I were to delete just one of these edges, it's not going to disconnect the graph, right? So this would be an example of a cut set, AB and AC. Another example of a cut set, for instance, would be, uh, let's see, maybe if we deleted how about A, B, and oh, maybe I should use a different color here. If we deleted A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, E, this is another example of a cut set. Because if we deleted all four of those edges, then we would have this component here, the A, C, E path, and then this component here. So A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, E is another example of a cut set. All right, notice... One of our examples of a cut set only had two edges, and another example had four edges, okay? But we say that the edge connectivity of a graph, which we denote lambda of g, is just the size of the smallest cut set of a graph. So even though you could disconnect this graph by deleting four edges, you could also disconnect it by deleting only two edges. Now, no edge of this graph is a bridge, right? Deleting any one single edge is not gonna disconnect the graph. So I know that lambda of G is at least two. And now we've actually instantiated that with this cut set here that has exactly two edges. So we've shown that it's possible to disconnect the graph by deleting only two edges. And deleting one edge is not enough to disconnect the graph. So in this example, we would say that lambda of G, the edge connectivity of G is two.